When we think of a prison, probably the picture that comes to our minds is a place with very thick walls and bars on the doors. But there is another kind of prison, one that certainly confines us, in fact, makes us think we're in solitary confinement. It's a large room, big enough to hold all of us at one time. Yet each person feels completely alone when entrapped there. The name of this room is depression. What do you do when you stumble into this room called depression? Sacred scripture offers us some help. And these insights in scripture are worth reflecting on because all of us are likely to find ourselves occupying this dark and lonely room at some point in our lives. Mental health experts tell us that depression is the most common problem to afflict human beings. We tend to stereotype depressed people as elderly and poor. But the truth is, no one segment of the population is any more likely to be depressed than any other. Depression chooses its victims indiscriminately, often when we least expect it. For example, Abraham Lincoln was chronically depressed, as well as Michelangelo, who painted the chapel, the roof of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican. Many movie stars and sports figures suffer from depression. In fact, one of depression's most clever ambushes is its sneaky attack on the backside of great triumph and success. This is exactly what happened to Elijah in sacred scripture in the Old Testament. He had just experienced complete victory in his contest with 450 prophets of Baal, the pagan god. But God had brought him fire from the sky, vindicating Elijah's faith and prompting a great revival of worship of the one true God. Elijah was indeed a hero. Yet it was at this very moment that Queen Jezebel threatened his life, causing him to collapse in fear and depression. He ran for his life when he got tired of running, he ran from life itself, begging God to let him die. So soon after his great triumph, Elijah forgot that a God who had protected him from 450 false prophets would certainly protect him from one angry queen. This is the trick of depression. It makes us lose our memory as well as our hope. So God found Elijah in this lonely room of depression. And what did God do? He didn't give him a, a blistering sermon or a happy pep talk. No, God did what all good friends do for those they love who are trapped in that dark room called depression. God sent an angel to offer him something to eat. That's all. Just a simple snack. No sermon, no scoldings, no guilt trip. Just something to eat. Elijah ate and fell asleep. God sent the angel again with another snack. And this time, Elijah felt the strength to make the first small step away from the gravitational pull of depression. God is persistent, like a good friend. And God comes with a concrete physical act of service and compassion. This is often all we can do for a depressed loved one. We do not have to fix their problem or try to rescue them. It is enough to bring a snack or a hug, or maybe just sit in silence with them. When we do this, we may be that angel that God is sending. If you can help that person make the first step, you are a nature indeed. So if anyone here today is locked up in that room called depression, 
with the drapes drawn tightly over the windows of your soul, please allow this word of God to pull back those curtains, at least just a bit. God has come to you to restore your strength and to remind you of his faithfulness in the past and his plans for your future. He especially comes now to bring you some food, the bread of life, his own body and blood. So come, all you who are hungry, discouraged, defeated, hopeless, sinful, and needy. Come and receive the God of